Man, TSR isn't getting here for a couple days. I guess I'll look at something else I have. Huh. The first All-Stars racing game is a bit weird, to say the least. I never played it before making this video, but I thought, you know, Team Sonic Racing is coming out, why not? Since I played Transform before playing this, I'm probably going to be making a lot of comparisons. Maybe you don't think some are fair, but you know, whatever. It's my opinion, who cares? I hope to get both this game and Transformed reviewed before I get to Team Sonic Racing, since I'll need a bit of time to play that game anyway. So without further ado, let's begin. Oh hell yeah, listen to that music. I know this is gonna be a good one. So like I said before, this game is a little weird. It's entirely probable I wouldn't think that if I had played this before playing Transformed, but I didn't. I will say they know how to do opening cutscenes right, but I'm noticing some pretty similar stuff between this one and the next one. <sighs> Come on, it's the same thing. Hey, hold on, that looks like that, that, Ah, man. You begin the game by making a driver's license, which changes colors depending on what is essentially your overall performance in the game so far, being determined by the game's currency, which you get by finishing while well in races, which I'll get more into later. The game then asks if you want to go for a test drive, which I decided to do since I wasn't sure how different the controls might be. Most of the stuff is the same, you know, press A to use items, right trigger is accelerate, left is brake, etc., although there are some very obvious differences, one of which you can't even discover in the test drive due to there being no jumps. The first difference is that the boost feels way faster than in Transformed. It feels a lot weaker in comparison, but doing quick drifts for boost feels way more viable than in Transformed if you're trying to regain speed after getting hit or boost chain. In Transformed, it feels like the game doesn't want you to do that and slaps you in the face for trying. The second is that while drifting, you can tap the acceleration button, in my case, the aforementioned right trigger, over and over to turn tighter around corners, which is extremely helpful. I should see if that works in Transformed. Oh, what do you know? It kinda does. And the third difference is the stunt system, which is done through tricks in this game. Oh boy. So to perform tricks, you press the brake button while in midair. The characters you're playing as will perform a short animation accompanied by a slight delay and then culminating in you receiving one level of boost. You can do this up to three times, although the animation needs to be complete and you need to have the boost ready before you hit the ground or else you lose all of it. It's a lot less fluid and can't really be used for maneuvering like stunts can, but it does look pretty swag. I see that the stunt system is returning in TSR, but like, if there was another game after this in the racing series, it'd be cool to see like a combination of the two. Like you do the stunts with the right stick like normal, right? But then you use the brake button as like a finisher and you can get like a higher tier boost that you can't get otherwise. I think that'd be pretty cool. Like, I don't know, I think, that, I think that'd be cool. Better than seeing your car, boat, or plane just kind of like roll around at the speed of sound. Score one for shoehorn Sonic references. This game also doesn't have a mod system for vehicles, keeping them all at their base stats. I'm not really docking points for it or anything as this is the first racing game in the series, but I still thought it was worth mentioning. The game has some interesting menus, which are all set up to look like cards. There's a single player mode, a local multiplayer mode, settings, and a shop. The game's options house the difficulty settings for the most part, which is... An odd choice, in my opinion. I prefer how the sequel handled it by letting you pick which difficulty you're going to use at the start of a race. The challenge menu contains in-game achievements. Some of them are hidden, so I'll probably never find out what they are. Or I could just, you know, read Sonic News Network. The shop allows you to buy new tracks and racers for Sega Miles, which are this game's currency. You earn it by doing pretty much anything involving gameplay, it seems. Winning races, completing missions... Oh shoot, that's all this game's content. You get a number of characters unlocked from the start, but the rest have to be purchased from this shop. Same goes for the tracks. I've been finding my fortune from completing missions, but it seems you'll just get it over time, since again, it's awarded for doing basically anything. There's also these cool little bios for the characters and tracks you have unlocked. I like that kind of thing. 
Also, can I just take a second to explain how extremely annoying it is for this game not to have full controller support? Don't get me wrong, the controller works fine, but for the love of all things holy, at least put in button icons for the controller, please. As far as the single player modes go, there's a Grand Prix mode, Time Attack, all called Time Trials, Mission Mode, and Single Race. They're all pretty self-explanatory. Grand Prix has you going through a cup of four different tracks separated by three difficulty levels. You earn a maximum of 10 points depending on how well you place upon finishing one race, and the person with the most points at the end of all four races wins. Time Attack sees you competing against yourself in order to get the best time on a specific track, and you also have the option of racing against the developer's ghost time, which is pretty cool. Single Race just lets you run one race on any track you have unlocked, but Mission Mode offers a bit more variety. There are a lot of missions here based around specific characters and references to their franchises, although some of them are there just for fun. I've been going through and getting the highest rank, AAA, on all of them, but this one... This one, I swear. Actually, no. Any mission with the Bonanza Brothers sucks, and you can't change my mind. Who even are these characters? What is an Opa Opa, and what is this game? There are 64 missions in total, and I've completed a bit over half of them, so yeah. Going back to the cast of characters, there are some... interesting picks. There's plenty of recognizable ones like Ai Ai, BD Joe, Beat, Ulala, and of course several Sonic characters. However, some of these are clearly be from before my time. I have literally no idea who the Bonanza Brothers are, I only vaguely knew who Opa Opa was before playing this, and for the love of god, please tell me, who the hell is Knuckles? Maybe I should read these info cards more. Not every franchise in this game has the luxury of having tracks, but the ones that do have tracks. And those tracks are awesome! A lot of the tracks have shortcuts or split pathways, which is something I barely saw Transform do. And if Transform did do it, then... well... A lot of the tracks feel significantly shorter than the original tracks in Transform, but that may just be due to the fact that Transform had different sections and gameplay mechanics that changed speed a lot. There's a decent amount of variety in the tracks too, but Super Monkey Ball tracks are the equivalent of Burning Depths, and I hate it. In a surprise to nobody, most of the tracks here are taken from the Sonic franchise, with a number of them having actually returned and transformed. Albeit without any added sections for boat or plane modes, which is perfectly understandable. And some of them are coming back in Team Sonic Racing as well. I've noticed some people aren't particularly happy with that, but honestly that's the least of my concerns with this game. I've noticed some of these shortcuts are really unforgiving, like this one in Dark Arsenal. You have to have at least a level 2 boost to make it across, and even then it feels like a gamble most of the time. Other ones, like this one in Lost Palace, are a lot less difficult though. Or maybe not. H hey, hold on a sec. Well, Beach Zone and Sonic Dash makes a lot more sense to me now. And while we're in a race here, I'd just like to talk about the announcer for a bit, and he's honestly a bit... conflicting. Being honest, I'm not a fan of the announcer's, like, actual voice. I don't hate it, but I prefer the one from Transformed, probably, because I played it first. However, I really do like the commentary during the race, and I feel like it livens things up a lot, which is something that Transform doesn't really have in the same sense. The announcer in that game will say things when you do stunts, take out multiple opponents, or just drive through a tricky section without crashing, but it's honestly not quite the same. I'd like to see a bit of a hybrid of both in a game with Transform's announcer voice. That'd be great. An interesting racing mechanic in this game is that while you're boosting, you can go through obstacles or enemies without taking any damage whatsoever. The same does not hold true for Transformed in the slightest, and it kind of feels like you can cheese races a little bit by doing that. I think it makes a lot of sense for the tracks in this game though, because they're designed around it, so it's still an enjoyable mechanic that has saved me more than once. Or almost saved me, at least. And at the start of the race, during the countdown, you can press and hold the acceleration button right in between 3 and 2 in order to get a free boost at the start. One major gripe I had with the races themselves is that there's no actual map. I don't know if that's supposed to make finding shortcuts for the first time more satisfying, but it can be extremely hard to find them during normal racing and also extremely hard to judge where other racers are. If it has this bar thing that goes on the top of the screen and some indicators at the bottom to show when another racer or an item is near you, but I still find it hard to tell exactly how close they are sometimes. 
If they're using an all-star move, their icon will also show up at the bottom of the screen regardless of how far behind you they are. So even if they're stuck at the dead left side of the map, their icon is still very much in the way on the bottom, making you think they're way closer than they actually are. Wonderful. Luckily, Transform fixed this issue by adding a real map, so this, this tangent was completely useless. I've noticed this game very much suffers from Mario Kart Syndrome, where you can just kind of get spammed by items and be completely screwed over no matter how well you're doing. The homing rocket power-up is very, very prominent in races, and I have gotten hit by it multiple times in quick succession, turning it into an unrecoverable loss, forcing me to restart the race. This actually made me somewhat annoyed during the final Grand Prix. I don't think that has anything to do with skill when it comes down to luck of the draw like that. Another thing Transform Fix. There's a couple of smaller things here and there as well, like a greater variety in vehicle types and some different items from the later installment. In this game, Shadow rides his motorcycle from his game in Sonic 06, for example. This is... Re I'd much rather have the motorcycle. As far as items go, we have homing rockets, which, surprise, home in on opponents and occasionally come in sets of three. Boxing gloves, dubbed KO gloves, which will bounce off walls, floors, and basically everything until they either hit something or disappear. They can also come in a set of three. Both of these can be fired behind you to hit an opponent or block an incoming item. Next are the mines, which drop behind you in place. Think a banana peel from Mario Kart, can come in a set of three, blah blah blah. There's this RC rocket thing called the Giant Rocket, which you can detonate manually after launching and has a massive blast radius, as well as the Speed Shoes, which activate the top level of boost immediately, a shield that protects one hit, a Mega Horn, totally not stolen from Mario Kart, which will attack anyone near you and destroy any incoming items or obstacles in the vicinity. There's a Pocket Rainbow, which you can drop behind you, and it will do this. Oh god. There's also a shooting star which turns your screen upside down. Just what I ordered. <laughs> Something's weird in this drink. And then bowling bombs, which... Yeah. The most interesting and unique power-ups might just be the all-star moves, though. You get them by struggling during a race, also known as sucking at games, and can activate it for a unique ability. I'm not going to list them all here, but as examples, Sonic and Shadow turn into Super Sonic and Super Shadow using the Super Sonic Boost and Chaos Spear respectively. A small sort of cutscene will play when you activate an all-star move, and each character's theme song will play during the time the move is active, which adds a nice touch and really makes them feel like special moments. Unlike Transformed. All in all, the items work well, it just sucks because they do a lot of damage and will quickly bring you to the point of needing it to restart a race if you're playing on the highest difficulty like I was. There's unfortunately only so much you can do to avoid them, so if the game wants you to get hit, you're getting hit. There's a couple of multiplayer game modes which I'm just going to briefly touch upon. There's normal race, and then a battle mode where you have a certain amount of health and duke it out with items, a capture the chow mode where you grab giant chow balloons and try to take them to a capture point without having the other player make you drop your chow, a grab mode where you grab the chaos emeralds although with their size they seem more like the super emeralds bring them back sega though you will slow down substantially the more of them you gather and will drop them all upon being hit a king of the hill mode which is fairly self-explanatory and a knockout mode which is just elimination i don't really have anyone to play these modes with but they seem fun enough and an alternative for just racing with them in the interest of getting off the subject of gameplay i'm going to talk about this game's music options real quick this game doesn't have quite as many original remixes as its successors, but the music is still very good and you actually get to pick what song plays on individual tracks. Remember that shop I mentioned earlier? That's where you can buy music for a set of tracks like Seaside Hill, and can also buy new characters and tracks themselves. I have most of the stuff unlocked, but since I doubt I'll be playing this game ever again after this video, I'm not too worried about unlocking everything. One other thing I wanted to mention was I was talking to a friend of mine, Sonic Hogspeed 99 and he told me about this glitch in the game called double steering. Basically, you can steer with the left stick and the D-pad at the same time because someone at Sumo Digital done goofed, and it's actually, like, kind of extremely broken. Just look at this insanity. 
He also told me about this cool skip in Whale Lagoon. So yeah, that's pretty much all Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing has to offer. It's not a bad game, it's pretty fun, and if you needed something to play with friends in a pinch, then this would do the trick. Uh, I mean, it's got a really bad case of Mario Kart Syndrome, but just for casual play, that's not really a big deal, honestly. I'd actually meant to start this back in the Forces review, but I forgot when I was doing the editing for it. But I'm going to give this game a rank similar to the way that you'd rank like a Sonic game. And no, I'm not copying Blue Rush. If you want to make a joke about that, then please leave. I give this game a solid B rank. I feel like it is far outclassed by its successor, but it's still a load of fun and I think it's worth playing all the tracks at least once to see what the game has to offer. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it either informative or entertaining, or ideally both. If you want to talk to me, feel free to leave a comment down below, or alternatively check out my Twitter which is linked in the description. I will be returning next time with either Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed or Team Sonic Racing depending on how quickly I can get this edited. That's about all I have to say. If you want to, you know, just keep an eye on my uploads and subscribe or just like bookmark my channel if you don't want to give me the extra number on the subscribe box because I totally, totally get it. You, you do you. But yeah, thank you again so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you'll stick around for the next one. And until then, I'll catch you next time.